and I'm telling you this, if Satan does not want me to tell you this, but the thing that he hates the most, that he does not want anyone to know, is he hates it when you don't. The message and the, the title tonight is, is really a genuinely, I know it's not published that way, but what, how I wrote it out was immunity against control and manipulation. And um, Satan is a master at this, and he does not want me to, to uh, talk about himself tonight, but I'm going to. You know, just so you know, you, you will probably never meet Satan, and uh, I've never met him. I, I don't know if he knows me or not. He's not, he's not the one that shows up in your bedroom at night. He's, um, he's, very, very, he's a very beautiful being. And uh, he, he, he doesn't show up in your bedroom. These, these things that show up in your bedroom, these things that come to you, you know, when you say the devil told you something, he, the devil didn't tell you that if you're talking about Satan himself. You're talking about evil spirits. There's, there's many of those. There's many of those evil spirits. They are not the same as this cherub. Okay, this cherub that fell is, is a different being that was uh, over Eden. So he covered Eden. I mean, this is, this is the word study that took these all these years. So he, he was assigned to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve came to the garden, they looked like God. He did not. And they, he watched all this happen. He watched them get all the authority, all the dominion over everything. And he became very jealous. But he was lifted up in pride. And he made his whole goal to take God off his throne. Satan is the first narcissist. So he is the first one, and he has still to this day held on to his title. No one has overcome or beat him at being a narcissist. He is the best. This is really the key, and that's why Ezekiel the prophet was shown this. And so that's why I got to go over this with you, because you got to understand what's going on around you, and you can't let it get into you. Okay, so because your heart is lifted up and you have said I, and thought, I am a God, I sit in the seat of the gods in the heart of the seas, yet you are only a man, weak, feeble, made of earth and not God. So it's talking about a man. Though you imagine yourself to be more than mortal, think your mind is as wise as the mind of God. Okay, verse Three, behold, you are imaging yourself wiser than Daniel. There is no secret you, you think that is hidden from you. Verse four, with your own wisdom and with your own understanding, you have acquired riches and power and have brought gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom and by your trade, you have increased your riches and power and your heart is proud and arrogant because of your wealth, okay? It's very important, because of your wealth. All right, thus says the Lord, because you have imaged yourself or imagined yourself in your mind to be like God or in the, have the mind of God, having thoughts and plans like God himself, he's still talking about a physical king here, prince, physical prince. Therefore, behold, I will bring strangers, Babylonians, upon you, the most ruthless and violent of all nations, and they will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, O Tyre, and defile your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit of destruction, and you will die the death of all those who die in the heart of the seas. Will you still say, I am God, in the presence of him who kills you? But you are only a man made of earth and not God in the hands of those who wound and profane you. You will die the death of the uncircumcised or the uncovenant person by strangers. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then in verse 11, he says this. This is very important. Now he's talking to someone else. He says, again, the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, take up a dirge or a funeral poem 
to be sung for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus saith the Lord. Now, this is where you have to see this is a spiritual being. You had the measure of perfection and the finishing touch of completeness, full wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, so the king of Tyre, the real king of Tyre, the prince of Tyre was not in Eden, the garden. We know that, okay. But this king was in Eden. Every precious stone was your covering. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness and evil were found in you. Through the abundance of your merchandising, you were internally, internally filled with lawlessness and violence and you sinned. Okay, so the merchandising had to do with the middle, being a middleman. And this is where you get this idea of how you separate and put somebody in between as your representative. And then you're hijacked because that's the person that is the, the, the narcissist. You, have, you, you, you hand yourself over. You put somebody in between and they take a cut. He started taking a cut. This is why we have what we have in the world. And we have the corrupt governments. We have the corrupt money system. We have pharmacaea. We have all, we have all this. So that's what has been happening through this, through this entity from the beginning. He wants to own all the game pieces somehow. And so what he does is he makes, he creates a debt system so that you can't get a house on your own and you can't buy things on your own. But really, all of you have the ability to make the money to buy multiple houses for, and, buy, and give, give all of them away and still have your nice house, but then just give houses away. Everyone has the ability to do that. But the system keeps you from being able to do that, makes it out of reach, you need initial capital to invest that you don't have. And then the return, you can pay back your debts. What happens is because of the unpredictability of, of the environment you're in down here, you get, you get a two years of lockdown. Now your initial investment cannot cannot be pay, paid back because you have you don't have the income because you don't have any customers okay so ministries and businesses start out right but because of the middleman and because of all these situations I just named which is a lot of data I'm, I'm sorry but it comes down to the fact that there was someone behind this prince of Tyre he thought he was God he thought he was but it was a physical person that says he's going to return back to the earth because he was just dirt, dust, and he's returning back even though he thought he was God. It was because there's an entity behind the scenes that was that person thinking that was that thought that really thought that, and it caused that person to start to think that and feel that and be that, be that narcissist. Okay, so therefore. I have cast you out as a profane and unholy thing from the mountain of God. Okay, so the king of Tyre wasn't on the mountain of God. So here we have a, a entity that was profane and unholy, but he was perfect and holy before. And he was cast out of the mountain of God. And he, this is it. This is it right here. This is the epitome right here. Verse 16 says, I have destroyed you, O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. And I saw those, fire, those stones of fire in heaven. And it's pure sapphire. Okay, your heart was proud and arrogant because of your beauty. You destroyed your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I lay you before kings. Okay, so Satan had a sense of entitlement. And this is, this is a personality trait of a... Of a of a narcissist. This is all clinical. I'm making it spiritual, but it's clinical. Everything I'm saying is a clinical diagnosis. It is literally a diagnosis. You can look it up. It's clinical. 
There are professionals that will diagnose you with this. And these are the characteristics, but it is literally taken out of Ezekiel 28. Okay, so the world system, everything that's working behind the scenes against you is going to have these kind of traits being pushed upon you. And if you resist them, then you're going to deal with people that have not resisted it in your church, on your staff, at your work, in your business, in your government for sure. It's all about control and manipulation because that's what it is with Satan. He does not operate through love. He does not have a reward system. He threatens and he makes it so that you have to do something and be enslaved. Okay, so there's a sense of entitlement and this is, this is, this is common among narcissists. They think that they're superior to people, to others. They, they think they're superior. It's really hard to, to convince them otherwise. And they become seared so that they cannot, they cannot see and they, they will lose control if they allow people to think that they're not what they are. In other words, they got to project this to another person in order to control them. So they, they, they deserve special treatment. They're superior to others. They believe that other people should be obedient to their wishes. And the rules don't apply to them. A narcissist needs to have attention. A narcissist needs to have validation and, and adoration. Needs to, he needs to brag and exaggerate. Because he can't produce it on his own. Okay, so, or she. So, you've got, you've, you've got to watch people that want you to boost their ego. Because what you're doing is you're feeding a shark. If they don't receive the treatment that they, they feel that they deserve, then they start, to, they start to speak rudely toward people and deem them inferior. There is a solical power that people produce that controls and manipulates you. And when these people are around you, you can feel it. Yeah. Okay, so you have to be careful that when you get into any sort of agreement or relationship with somebody, that you determine ahead of time how far you want to go with this person because they have a solical power. If you turn that over to them in a way where they have access, then they can begin to manipulate you. And it will get to the place where if you are not careful, you will start to feel and do things that you would normally not do. You will find as soon as you sever, relation, sever relationships with certain people, it gets rid of the devil problem. Because the devil was, was working through them. I'm just telling you this because I want you to come out of the status of being a victim tonight and be placed over into the area of ministers of the Most High God. Okay? You don't have to be in the status of a victim. This, the whole idea is for you to be neutralized, to be paralyzed, to not be able to function so that you have to manipulate in order to get what you need. And the, and the bottom line is the reason you're here is to display the glory of God because a miracle needs to happen. See, when I feel t like it's tight, I know it's a breakthrough. When I feel it get real tight, I start giggling because it's like, it's time. It's time for a breakthrough. And then all of a sudden you're not a victim anymore. You've gone past your abilities. You've gone into the supernatural. And now everything is possible. Nothing's impossible. Why? Because you have already exceeded all the laws against you. Amen. You've already exceeded the limitations. You're already past all that. And you're still alive. Okay, so <laughs> while you're here, while you're here, while you're functioning, and you're alive, and you've taken another breath, and your heart is beat, another beat, then you need to glorify God. And you need to say, Lord, I know you're in this. 
And I know there's a miracle in this, in this life. And I know that everything, you'll find out. See, I had this glimpse when I was there. I saw that everything I went through, even though it was not God that did it, I saw it was all meant for my good. And I saw that it was all for my character. I saw that it was all for my benefit. And those people, they had no idea. They thought that they had put me under. But they had caused me to go beyond what I could go. And I'm telling you, forgiveness is a gift to unlatch you from a narcissist. So, the deliverance has come into this room. And I'm telling you this. If Satan does not want me to tell you this, but the thing that he hates the most, that he does not want anyone to know, is he hates it when you don't respond. He hates it when he has no effect. You make him not effective, and you do that by forgiving. And you do that by not being a victim anymore. A narcissist hates it when you don't respond. 